Hey everyone, uh, today we are going to talk about the dark pool summary dashboard. Uh, you can uh, go, go to this dashboard by clicking here. And uh, let's just try dive right into it. It's a very interesting dashboard. There is a lot of useful data in here. And so let's just talk about that. So on the top we have what we call uh, signature prints. And uh, these are prints or these are dark pool trades that were reported about 24 hours late. And there is a there is an exploit or there is a loophole in the system that allows funds and institutions to report their trades that are happening on the dark pool uh, with, with about a 24 hour delay. And when that happens, what we see is the price of that dark pool trade was nowhere found in the price of today's range. So we have a bunch of signature prints here. We can see that they were filled at 320. Now let's see the price of today so this is the price of today and we are at august uh, 9th and you can see that the high of today was about 318 and the low was about 315 so 320 was never the price any time today which means these uh, which means these prints were reported 24 hour late because 320 was definitely the price uh, yesterday so that tells us like for sure that these were delayed and they were reported delayed and we can use that information to actually gauge whether they were bought or sold sold positions so if the price of these dark pool prints is above the price of where we are at right now then we can assume that since the price went down after these were uh, traded these were potentially sold positions or these were potentially bearish positions which is why you are seeing these red uh, sort of bars and red everything and so that's what we use. So if these were, let's say, traded at 310 and let's say the price uh, sometime during the last year or during yesterday was 310 and today the price is 315, 300, 320, then we would assume that these were bullish positions or these were bought positions and we would consider them bullish, obviously. And so that's like uh, the whole concept between, uh, that's the whole concept with signature prints. Uh, some platforms only consider a fixed size of shares as signature prints but we just consider anything that comes late where the price isn't found in today's range and we consider that as a signature print and then we use yesterday's price and see like where uh, is the actual trade price falling whether it's like above today's price uh, or below and then we use that to gauge the direction of the dark pool print. So most of the time you'll hear that dark pool data never has direction. That's still true, but we have a proxy to gauge whether it was a bullish or bearish position. You see this uh, with different stocks. Let's see if we can find. Okay, so for, or even for uh, S&P, we had some big <laughs> uh, signature prints. So how do you actually use them? The first thing that uh, comes to mind, or the first thing that you can do is just like gauge direction, overall direction with uh, these so like if you're seeing uh, like a bunch of uh, signature prints that are bearish then probably the market uh, might be uh, looking for a move down but that's not a very solid uh, analysis or that's not a very solid advice what you want to be doing is you want to look at the frequency of these signature prints compared to the frequency of prints over the last couple of weeks or months and we have a widget on the daily dp amount so this doesn't just take into account the signature prints but it does take into account all uh, dark pool prints and anytime you see a spike here and then you're also seeing tons of signature prints on the top then a confluence of both of these things actually means that today there was a lot more dark pool volume compared to the average dark pool volume and that obviously can and be, can be the start of a new trend and you can gauge the direction of that trend based on whether these signature prints on the top are bullish or bearish. So that's a much more viable strategy. If you do that, uh, you'll see you'll be able to find exact bottoms and exact tops quite a lot of times. But, as, but, but there has to be a spike in the dark pool volume. You shouldn't just be looking at a couple of signature prints and think that the market is just going to go down heavily tomorrow. So just some tips and tricks there. The next thing which is a really cool uh, analysis uh, or, or which is a really cool uh, data we have is the dark flow and so this is based on dark pool prints it, it is not based on options flow and what we see here is these bars are the dark pool volume the, this yellow line is the average of the dark pool volume and this white line is the stock price of the ticker that we are looking at which would be qqq here 
and so we can see that uh, anytime price falls and uh, the, the dark pool volume uh, goes up we do uh, sometimes recover but sometimes we don't because like if you see at this point in time the dark pool volume elevated itself or the dark pool volume was quite high before the big move down and that happens uh, quite frequently with QQQ so you can actually see that here as well so at this point in time you can see the dark pool volume was actually the highest it has ever been in the last eight years now that is very significant and based on some previous uh, occasions we can see that sure during covid the dark pool volume increase caused the price to go up but in most of the other cases when the dark pool increased you, you see the dip here you see the dip here when the dark pool uh, values or the dark pool volume increased price actually went down in the next couple of weeks or months so this would actually be a pretty good signal that the dark pool volume is the highest it's ever been in the last eight years so we might be expecting a downturn here and so that's what this chart is showing it's just showing you how dark pool volume relates to the price but it's still a very like eight uh, year uh, eight years chart so sometimes it's hard to really uh, zoom zoom in and actually look at these trends which is why you have uh, the ticker uh, you have the chart on the right which is called dark pool flow correlations and what this is showing you is this yellow dot is where we are at right now in terms of this dark pool volume so this is where we are at and which is so the, the value is about 10 and those are the flow moving average is about 10 and this is in millions and you can see that we are at about 10 so this is where we are at right now that's the yellow dot the white dots are how much the price changes in the next time period and that time period by default is 60 days you can change it to 70 days you can change it to 15 days you can change it to 30 days let's keep it 60 days so this is telling us that any time we had 10 million in dark pool flows there were a couple of instances of that and in all of those instances in the next 60 days and we are looking at the past eight years of data here in the next 60 days there were only five instances where the price actually went up how much did it go up that you can recognize by looking at the y-axis which is the future 60 day price change so in those five instances, price went up about 20%, 10 to 20% in the next 60 days, which would be about three months. But there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight instances where the price actually went down after we had about, after we were at 10 million in dark pool flows. And now that's a very useful, obviously, uh, way to gauge where dark pool how dark pool uh, volume might correlate with the price change and you can see that the the highest uh, the market uh, the highest qqq went after this level after being at this level historically is about 15 percent so, so this point is about 15 percent but the lowest it went is about 22 percent or 21 percent so just now if you're just looking at this chart and if you're not looking at anything else then this is telling you that there is a slightly higher probability that we would go down from here onwards. Okay, so th I hope that's clear because like just that alone is a really cool way to visualize dark pool data and actually get insights because dark pool data is inherently limited and inherently hard to work with because we just don't know whether these trades are being bought or sold. But what we can look at is the volume like the spikes in the volume and things like that and correlate them with how they have historically uh, worked with different price regimes or with the different markets and see what happened and then just extend that to what might happen in the future in the case of qqq it looks like there is slightly higher probability of a downside in the next 60 days which be, which would be about uh, three months and uh, now just a tip here uh, these dark pool uh, the dark pool data works much better, uh, especially the charts that we are looking at. They, it works much better uh, for slightly longer term, like two, three month, uh, uh, two, three month, like slightly longer uh, term trading than just like the next five or seven days. As you can use dark pool data for the next like couple of days or even for day trading. We'll go into that in just a minute. But this chart specifically works much better for slightly longer term trading because even if you look at the seven day, 
you'll see that there, there is almost an equal number of dots above which would mean positive price in the next six, in, in the next seven days and below which would mean negative price change in the next seven days so you really start to see patterns when you go from the 7 15 30 to actually 60 days in the future so i hope this chart is clear because it's a really cool chart let's look at the largest dark wool regions and so right <laughs> right off the bat if you have seen our other videos on stocks and options uh, dashboards you will see that we have dark pool levels in both our stock and options dashboard but you'll see that the levels here are slightly different they are not the exact levels that you are seeing there and the reason is these are not dark pool levels these are dark pool regions so what we are doing in this chart is we are aggregating different regions on the price and we are aggregating them together to form a single dark pool region instead of just a single dark pool level and so that's what you see uh, on this chart you can uh, change the granularity or the change the time frame uh, to longer term or uh, shorter term and then you can use these dark and then you can use these dark bull regions uh, as potential support and resistance levels and a really cool example of that is this 315 level you can see one two three four about four times today it was held very nicely because there was about about four three hundred four hundred million dollars uh, sitting on that level so when price comes to these levels there are institutions and smart money sitting because they have spent millions of dollars on these levels so they sometimes defend these positions which causes a support or a resistance on these levels so these levels are very you can actually see like the 148 the 317 was actually resistance so one two three four and five so like we had a range mode market today and the range was entirely dictated by the two largest dark pool regions we had uh, for today or, or for uh, that were close to the price today so again uh, this is pretty useful if you're a day trader even if you're a, a longer term trader you can look at uh, one hour one day uh, and other charts and you'll still get uh, a lot out of it and so let's uh, say you want to look at the one day chart let's actually do one hour because it's, it's a lot more clear and let's say like price for some reason comes down to this uh, 307 yeah not not 3 290 or 300 level you can see like this level one two about three and four this level has acted as a support and a resistance for quite some time so if price does come back to this level then this would be a level of high interest for us because it might act as a support so that's the dark pool regions it's important to know the difference this it's very similar to dark pool levels but we are slightly doing some aggregation here then we have like the same uh, form in the form of uh, the same uh, levels in the form of a bar chart these are not uh, that useful but they still give you an idea on like whether there is more dark pool volume above the price so white is where we are at right now green is the highest or the the max uh, dark pool level in terms of volume and premiums spent on positions and so it just gives you an idea on whether there is more supply or more resistance above the price or be, or whether there is more support below the price and then this is the chart that uh, takes into account the total daily dark pool uh, amount uh, and this is in like millions so like we are getting uh, billions of dark pool uh, billions worth of dark pool prints every day because uh, the chart is almost always above the 1000 one we, uh, 1000 million mark which would be a billion so again what we want is for, for this chart in particular what we want is we want to see spikes because spikes in the dark pool data can often be the start of a new trend. What trend is that? That you can actually gauge from this chart. Then we have the dark, uh, daily block trade. So one thing that we do slightly differently is we also consider block trades, which are trades that are filled on, on ex that are filled on exchange. So these are trades just like uh, what we trade. These are not hidden. We know their direction. So we do consider them as our dark pool data as well, but we separate them out and we don't like merge them together, but they're still on the same uh, dark pool dashboard that you're seeing here. And for these trades, since we know whether they were filled at bid or ask, we can assume the direction based on uh, if they were filled at the bid, then it, it was probably a sold position. If they were filled at ask, then it was probably a bought position. And based on uh, the sentiment or based on the premiums on the bid side and the ask side, we can actually draw a cumulative sentiment. So this just uh, tracks the daily amount of block trades and it uh, 
calculates the cumulative value so add whatever we have today in the, the in yesterday's value and just like keep doing that and this can be used to gauge sentiment as well and when you are looking at dark pool or options flow or any other data you always want to be finding confluences between different uh, tools and different data points and so here you can see the dark pool volume is actually indicating a slightly bearish move as well a bearish move and then you can you're also seeing the, the dark pool sentiment or actually the block trade sentiment is indicating a slightly bearish move as well so that just gives us slightly more confidence that from a dark pool perspective we are expecting a, a slight bearish move in the future and then we have the historical dark pool and the historical block trades data and uh, these red bars are again uh, these red or sort of gradients are these signature prints because their price was nowhere between the range uh, between the price range today you can see like the difference between this price although it was like it came today the price 320 and 317 were not close uh, to each other so anytime we find uh, these signature prints we highlight them in this table as well and they, they are highlighted only for today's data not from uh, past data and then we have the block trades so uh, one thing to note here is that all of this data like all of our dark pool data is delayed for about 15 minutes why do we not pay a couple thousand dollars to remove that 15 minute delay because as we talked about uh, in signature prints most of the da dark pool data already comes delayed to these exchanges which then send these to retail traders or to whoever buys it and so there is no uh, reason for us to spend like a significant amount of money just to remove that 15 minute delay because even with that these signature prints are still going to come 24 hours late so it just doesn't make uh, sort of sense to us I think as long as we are looking at uh, these levels and these sort of data on a slightly macro perspective and then just using the levels for short term trading, we are like doing much, uh, we are doing more than enough, I believe, in terms of how our users are performing. Uh, so they, are, they have been having a blast with these dark pool levels as support and resistance regions, support and resistance levels. Uh, so there is no uh, reason for us to remove that 15 minute delay. It's still obviously a limitation. Uh, someday we would love to, but I just wanted to uh, note that. So that's it for the dark pool uh, dashboard. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a small dashboard, but it has plenty of useful data, but highly encourage everyone to spend time uh, on some of your favorite stocks and see if you can find play, see if you can find spikes in the price, because sometimes what happens is uh, this uh, is Let's actually look at GME. So I have no idea uh, how GME or AMC looks, but let's actually look together. Okay, so n n nothing really, but let's assume uh, the dark pool flows were somewhere here at 4 million. So that would mean that historically, anytime the dark pool flows were at, let's say 4 million, almost always we went up, we, we went up in the next uh, couple of uh, weeks or months because this is like 60 day 60 day future price and that would be very cool because then that gives us uh, some insights into what might happen in the future even right now you can see that most of this negative slight negative returns are with very small dark pool uh, flows but as they're increasing you can see the returns are increasing as well which is why you are seeing this small rally too so really interesting data it can give you a lot of plays I'd highly recommend uh, spending some time with this dashboard. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, uh, just post them uh, in the comments below. And thanks for watching this video.